Star Wars movies. Star Trek. A, a slip of the tongue. We walked by the Star Trek booth just now. From the Star Wars movies, tell us. Tell us what it was like playing Landau Calrissian, such an enigmatic character. Well, it was a lot of fun. All right, and, you know, this is a character that has had, you know, a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation going around him because, you know, he's the big guy that uh, betrayed Han Solo, but then there's people saying, well, no, he had a plan. Uh, what do you say about that? Well, you know, he was like Steve Wynn. He had a whole situation on uh, Cloud City and the and, um, on Besman. Oh, Cloud, Cloud City on Besman, yes. And... Um, um, he actually had to forfeit everything as a result of his friends and his friends coming along with Darth Vader behind him. And uh, so um, Lando had to devise a way or figure out a way to hold on to his situation and at the same time um, try to prevent the complete demise of uh, of all of these people that uh, Vader was coming after. In fact, Lando even stood up to Vader for about three seconds, then realized what he was doing. So we have tons of fans watching right now. They're going crazy. They want to ask you questions, and I'm getting fed questions right now from our fans, and they want to know, what do you believe is your best work to date? Well, of course, you know, I got nominated for an Emmy when I did uh, Gail Sayers and Brian's song. Why don't you tell us about that? Oh, that was a really uh, an extraordinary experience. It was uh, probably, I generally dis uh, describe it as an act of love. The whole, it was a very special moment in, uh, in my life. It's one of those moments, single, one single moments you, every now and again you run into in, in this long journey that we're all taking. And now, do you think that uh, Star Wars is something that people can take to heart as a good story uh, with moral values? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there, there are not a lot of things, elements about the, uh, the Star Wars saga. And, you know, it has to do with good and evil, which is what we all seem to be very much concerned with. And, um, and how you uh, can somehow manage to, to survive all of that. And are there any directors that you've not had the opportunity to work with that you would like to work with? This is a fan question. Oh, it's uh, uh, Tarantino I would love to work with. Oh, wow, Tarantino. And why is that? Oh, I think he's brilliant. Really? So you like his, his movies, his crazy movies, his bloody movies? Oh, I love his movies. What is your favorite Tarantino movie? All of them. All of them, all at once. I haven't seen the uh, new ones yet, the new one yet, but I intend to. The Inglorious Bastards? Yeah. It is a fantastic movie. I've seen it myself, and I can recommend it highly. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, there was a robot chicken sketch with Billy D. Williams in it, and I hear that you were the one that voiced that. What was it like? Well, Seth Green is uh, my buddy, and uh, I do a lot of uh, other voices as well. There's uh, G uh, General Bitchface that I do, <laughs> uh, but I have a lot of fun with those guys. And so you're a good friend of Seth's? Yeah. And uh, if he ever called you up and said, I'm doing a Robot Chicken episode right now and I need you, would I'll it be, be any right question? There. That is fantastic. And he's such a great guy. I mean, his shows are fantastic. Family Guy right. and Robot Chicken. He is hilarious. Um, now, the fans love you so much and they want to know, do, uh, do you feel that you betrayed your friends in any way or in, in the movie? Or were you just trying to sacrifice a few for the greater good? Well, I ended up doing a heroic thing, so I suppose uh, I didn't really, it wasn't a matter. I mean, listen, every good character with a kind of a dubious background is always a more interesting character. But, you know, this, the, the way it was written, this guy was faced with a situation that he had to somehow, you know, deal with. And uh, did you ever in your wildest dreams think that you'd become so famous and popular for that role? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you knew you know from the start. Of course. And, uh, you know, uh, I've already asked a very similar question, but the fans are asking again. They want to know if there are any other favorite roles that you've had. Well, Lady Sings the Blues, Mahogany, uh, the Bingo Long Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings. Um, uh, I don't know. Well, I've done a lot of stuff. You know. And if there a were... A lot of stuff I've done on stage. Oh, you have some stage work. Why don't you tell us about your stage work? Well, A Taste of Honey, um, Fences, um, uh, 
uh, Martin Luther King, uh, stuff I did back when I was a kid growing up here in New York, like uh, Slow Dance on the Killing Ground. Um, uh, You've been in a lot of different lot of things. Stuff, yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff. And you've had a lot of cameos. What would you say has been your favorite cameo? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to say, really. You know, there's just so much. I, it's I, hard to pick. I, I just enjoy all of it, you know. I'm, I'm having a good time. Yeah, and you're, you're apparently a very busy guy. Do you have any current projects that you're working on that you'd like to tell us about? Well, I've been working with Robert uh, Townsend. and uh, He's uh, been doing these uh, for the uh, web. He's doing a series called Diary of a, of a Single Mom, so I'm really enjoying uh, working with him on that. And it's a damn good uh, series. We've done two episodes already. All right, and uh, do you have a website that you'd like to tell us about? And of course, we got Cult 45. That's back out there. I'm doing that again. Oh, Cult 45. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's in Detroit right now. they got all the billboards up there in Detroit. But uh, we're we're just start, you know I'm just starting to start I'm just starting I haven't done any any voice campaigns yet but I I intend to. All right, uh, and, and they already have good stuff already you know mm -hmm. those two quotes you know the uh, it works every time and um, don't let the smooth taste fool you so I guess we'll be doing some more. Okay, now I asked you if there was a director that you'd like to work with and you said Quentin Tarantino. Now is there a role that you would like to play? Well, I was talking about it earlier. I've always want. Well, I don't know if I can do it now, but I always wanted to play Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington? Who is that? Uh, uh, you don't know who Duke, Duke Ellington? Oh my goodness! I'm sorry. I'm I'm young. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Well, he was one of the great geniuses of jazz. Oh, Duke! Yeah. I'm sorry. Of course. Um, you know, I have uh, Louis Armstrong on my iPod, and I like to listen to that oh, from time oh, to time. Oh, Ellington was pretty extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, if there were another uh, Star Wars movie to come out and they asked you to do a cameo uh, or maybe play an older version of yourself, would you do that? Sure. And uh, would you ever think about being in any of the Star Wars video games? I think I'm already in those games. Uh, oh, really? You've been asked I to be in them? I don't know which ones, but I, I remember. Uh, a couple you know, at least. Yeah. And... Um, if you uh, say, say, for example, say the dark side, if I may say that, decided to call you over and the Star Trek people asked you to be in a role, would you do that, or do you feel brand loyalty? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, so it would be a tough decision. Well, I'm a capitalist. Oh, oh yeah. Whatever, <laughs> whatever gets you paid. Whatever gets you paid. So you're at an event like this, and you see all these fans. I mean, look behind us. Look behind us. We have all these fans dressed up, and they are, they're going nuts watching this interview. They're all in love with you. Oh, my God, look how many people there are. They're all loving this interview. You see these people. What, is, what are the thoughts that go through your mind when you're introduced to all these fans? Oh, what are we, what are we looking at here? Uh, it's invisible. It's invisible. <laughs> okay. Uh, interacting with these fans, what are the emotions that go through you? Oh, no, I really enjoy the... Listen, I've been very lucky, very fortunate. Uh, you know, I've had uh, people support me throughout the years, so it's always nice to see everybody. And, mm -hmm. Now, and how many conventions have you gone to? I don't know, a lot. Quite a, a lot, few, yeah. quite a few. Over, and Over the years, yeah. Do you plan on continuing? Yeah, why not? It's fun. Do you have any uh, favorite conventions? Well, this is one of them. This is one of them, New York? Yeah, New York, and uh, I've been to Europe. We've been to London, we've been to Belgium, we've been to New Zealand. I love New Zealand, Australia, uh, Chicago. Uh, we've been on Toronto. We've been all over the place. You're a well-traveled man. Do you have any favorite countries or cities? Huh? I said that you're a very well-traveled man. Do you have any favorite countries or cities? Uh, well, I love Italy and I uh, love England. I spent a lot of time in, in London. Um, New Zealand is my one. I love New Zealand. And why, why do you love New Zealand? Tell us a little bit There's about New Zealand. really quite pristine about uh, New Zealand. I mean, it's clean, clear. Uh, food is excellent. People love to party. It's a great place. Beautiful weather. Beautiful place. I mean, it's just, it's a paradise, really. Have you ever uh, thought about moving there? Uh, yes, I did think about moving there, but I won't be moving there. <laughs> but it's a great place to go. What about in your uh, later years when you decide to finally retire? I don't know. I'm, I'm never going to retire. Never going to retire. No. 
I got my painting, you know, which keeps me going, and I do my exhibiting.